Oh, I love this song. Nice. It's a banger. Yeah. Let's go. Huh. Hey. What? I, no. Hey. Told him suck it, don't you panic. Wait. Uh, <laughs> then I smash him with no condom. Lick my butt, I can't stand. Could you could you turn that down real quick? Tyson's neighbor, could you turn that down real oh, quick? Oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, that, yeah, that was just a car Ooh. driving by. Wait, nice. so is, <laughs> was that the original or the new version? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the fucking Lil Nas X version. <laughs> uh, don't don't make him like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> here's a fa here's a song the whole family will love for Christmas. <laughs> I do like when he says. Phantom. I was literally about to say sucking dick in a phantom. That is some real hood shit. I can't do hood shit like that. Man. Straight boy turn up sucking dick in a phantom. <laughs> oh, I has already memorized the lyrics to no one's surprise. So hmm, there you really go. Makes you think. Yeah, I'll have to ponder that one for a little bit. So all right. Well, I, I'm about to complain a little bit because we were supposed to record two hours ago. <laughs> no, I'm about to complain. I'm about to complain. Thanks. Not, not. I'm about right. to blow. So, I, you know what? Don't don't use your entire uh, treasure chest within the first two minutes. Okay, you gotta surprise me at All some right. point. Yeah. So. All right, if you blow your soundboard sounds now, how are you gonna be entertaining for the rest of the episode? Yeah, seriously. Oh, true, but true. all this talks about nutting and blowing. He's blowing his, uh, I guess, in a, a comedic load with his soundboard. So I was going to say I'm, I'm a little angry right now because I ordered food two hours ago and it just finally got here. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when it got here, I was gonna be angry at the person who delivered it, but they had a crying baby in the car and a wife and all that stuff. So Damn. it was it was kind of awkward. But they. Took my order, picked it up, then went to a pizza hut, picked up pizza from there, delivered that to a nearby college, then decided to finally deliver me my mm. food. This is an hour and a half Bruh. later. It actually took so Bruh. long, I was Bruh actually moment. angry on Moore's behalf. Yes. He was hungry on my behalf, but he's That's always so hungry. Is, so. that, is that normal? <clears throat> that kind of waiting time? No, it should only be around 20 or 30 minutes, but here's something Are surprising. Serious? Are you serious? What I got was around twenty something dollars. It ended up being forty dollars after delivery. That's how much what? they destroyed. Okay, I, that that's Whoa. fucked up. Oh, what I was gonna say is, um, waiting times in the in the UK, it, it's not that uncommon to wait an hour, hour and a half for food. At least where I live. Um, but what twenty twenty dollars for delivery? Are you kidding? <laughs> That's what blew me away when not only when I was in Edinburgh but London Dude, as well. Anytime I got American pickup, Edinburgh, you fucking wanker. Dude, a forty dollar <laughs> total, a forty dollar total for for your, your whole thing. That's like sixty New Zealand dollars. Holy shit, dude! That's a um, lot of money. Yeah, that's what blew me away when I was overseas. There wasn't any of that. It was just the price of the food and maybe a small <laughs> yeah. tip, which I mean, blew uh, my mind. Nah, nah I'm, some. I guess you're in the heart of the city, but like, I mean, on the outskirts, you do get fees, like, uh, but but they'll be like three to f three pounds, five pounds. Um, but the annoying ones are um, are where 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 they um, they make you have like a minimum order of like twenty pounds, twenty five pounds. I'm I, I'm guessing that's in the U S as well. They kind of have something like that. It's, it's around. Easy. It's around ten dollars. Yes, we know you can. But there's, also, there's no a one, point. Yeah. There's a point where it's not profitable to um to just have a small order, so they kind of have to push you into it. Okay. Yeah, but again, no one cares what like Sherlock Holmes wanker like rural area of England you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really bother okay. me. I yeah. Okay. True. Got it. I mean, you don't indubitably, have my dear Watson. No. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm arriving. Yeah. I'm arriving. Exactly. <laughs> So, I'm on the verge of arriving, my goodness. Uh, so apologies if you hear me stuffing my face a little bit, but I've been hungry for two hours, so here we are, right now. But, while I'm eating these chips and guac, <laughs> what's that song? Count my guac. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> watch me count what, my what? guac. <laughs> Tips Is and that... cock? No. <laughs> <laughs> watch me count my cock. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, unfortunately, I hate to put our branding behind this uh, this intro, but you are listening to 
the Pink Boys podcast, and we are thankfully minus an Australian, so it's it's the it's the three amigos. And can we we're, can we, can we change it from podcast to cockpit? Okay. <laughs> you are now listening to the Pink Boys cockpit. <laughs> there you go. I kind of uh, like that. All right, pilots, there you're on. Wait, well, fuck. What do they say? <laughs> you're in. You're uh, in the driver's seat right now. Oh yeah. Um, welcome aboard. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Science. do this. I'm your, no. I'm your bloody captain speaking. You have to take your fucking Xanax on this. Hypothetically, office. what if we were to play? What if we were to crash this plane into the World Trade Center? <laughs> you know, I do like how a lot of this brand of humor came about between us because someone would make a comment that Tyson didn't like, and then he would respond with the little Wayne lyric, "Suck a." something dick for an iphone 6 and i thought it was some <laughs> second and then, dick for an iphone 6 yeah <laughs> terry for a new black man <laughs> yeah so we've just been it's we've been really stretching that one it, it is a banger and i i listened to it yesterday and i said damn little wayne goes hard man he all he'll always go hard he's it's, got some I, sus lyrics but really what did he mean by this <laughs> <laughs> yeah truly <laughs> truly well you know what? I, I'll get into this a little bit with you. Lil Wayne, Drake, uh, a lot of the Young Money crew, they all had to get fucked by Birdman. They all had to have sex with Birdman. <laughs> I heard that rumor, That's... but I thought it's like a, it was fake. Is that actually real? Wow, he so thinks it's a rumor. Okay. Do you, know how, <laughs> do you know how much depth there is to homosexuality within rap culture? It's insane. It's Let's almost get right like... into it. <laughs> yeah. So and this is a serious episode. episode. Pink Boys cockpit. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> yes. It's uh, thematically named, but yeah, it's a huge thing because w when you <clears throat> when you have sex, so it's all rock and roll trope as well. But I mean, why do you think they dress so flag flag flagrantly womanly with makeup? Once you're really? able to step into any vagina, it stops becoming interesting to you, and it becomes about being the manliest man you could possibly be and getting a man to like match that. You know, yeah, we're gonna so take you're telling me the guys and we're gonna from, rock his world. You're telling yep. me that the guys from Guns N' Roses have a have their backs blown out and all that. I guarantee you those guys have had gay sex. What do you think, I guarantee uh, you. What do you think? Really? Damn. Take yeah, back absolutely. To Paradise City where the dicks are hard the cocks and the are boys small. are pretty. <laughs> oh, won't you please suck my car? You know, I'm going to ask going forwards if you guys do that. It's got to rhyme. It's got to rhyme <laughs> at some point. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to go over real quick. This isn't housekeeping. This isn't an announcement. This isn't anything. This is a real laid back episode. All right. Well laid back. It's, all right. Yeah. We, we gave you guys two full on crypto episodes, so we're we're cryptoed out at this point. We yeah yeah. yeah. And we're if you got to, it, yeah. let's put it this way: we're about to give you the cryptic homosexuality. It's not so okay. cryptic, and it's not veiled at all. So we'll uh, leave I mean. we'll leave comments like that alone for a good ten minutes to let everyone reset and recharge. So I'm I'm hopeful that. I'm hopeful we could move on from that a little bit. So I, I, I don't have too much to say. Um, I know Tyson's had a few topics, and I don't know if you want to talk about the broader market at all, Tyson. No, uh, let's just get get the fucking market shit out of the way first. Let's yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So I feel like <clears throat> me and Moira I feel were... like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> like a be a no, that's not the song I was singing. You fucking idiot! I oh know. my god. All right. Well, wow. you ruined it. You're just gonna go ahead, Tyson. That? Just sing the wrong song. Yep. Sorry. She. No, but uh, me and Moyer were vindicated because we mm -hmm. thought it was the bottom last uh, week, and it pumped from there. So yeah, um, I think Bitcoin. It looks kind of good if it closes above 17k, 17.09. Uh, we should probably make our way to 17.9, and I think it should go. I feel like it could hit 18 to 19 from there. Mm. But I'm just playing it level to level at this point. I'm playing the range from 17 to 17.9. Um, I'm long on fucking a bunch of different coins. One of them being Chainlink. I longed from $6.60. Dropped. And I want to keep... <laughs> unironically. <laughs> uh, I entered two longs. One at 660 and one at 760. I think Chainlink can hit nine dollars 40 ish around there wow. so on the tp around there holy shit you only yeah. have five years i know right? um <laughs> so i'll just say here tyson just to supplement that 
this looks really ugly on the one week. I think we're going back to 15K. I don't think the bottom is in at all, and there's more to come. Uh So I hope there's more suffering for everyone, and I want to be party to it. So, um, Mm. But I unfortunately do – I do think what you're saying about Chainlink may be true. I do think it does have another leg to it going into the next, uh, I guess, season, you could say. I know they mentioned something about staking, right? Yeah, staking is yeah, happening. Yeah, but you're this, locked in for month. like you're locked in for like two years only. Yeah, that's I, I that's like the staking, funniest thing. Like, they bit. they released staking right, and then everyone was like coping so fucking hard because in the staking uh, manifesto it said that um, manifesto. if you lock, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you lock your if you stake your link, all the rewards and the staked link is locked for a period of twelve to twenty four months. So <laughs> you, so you fucking. Re- Retard linkies are going to have your, your link locked away for like two fucking years if you do that. Mm. But isn't that a good thing? That means they won't be able to sell for two years, which means the price will go up. Isn't that how it works? Yeah, but dude, two year lockup is such a long fucking time. Like, yeah. Like, they should not do that. Like, that's going to be I mean, very. Yeah. Within the context of crypto, one year is about five. So that's the yeah. equivalent of locking up your chain link for 10 years. So. Uh, and ironically, uh, I, I I feel like crypto does age you. Well, just, actually, you know what? I'm just going to say financial markets in general and quote unquote working in them. That, that includes trading and being a neat. Um, it ages you a lot. Like so, There are so many bold people in this industry. It's crazy. You ever notice that? There must it's be sh- some kind of statistic. Well, that's this is like you know, male. What's it? What they call it? Androgenic, uh, androgenic alopecia, um, being <laughs> okay. correlated, being correlated to um, uh, a bearish financial markets and, and hmm. such. There must be something I, going on there. Yeah, that's that's an interesting. Maybe it's point like if you're trying to hire a trader for your trading floor. You can base it based on like how shit the guy's hair looks. If he looks really shit, you just know he's staying, staying in front of the PC for like hours and then, and he's a good trader. <laughs> mm, mm. That's yeah, that's a good way to look at it. So the the you measure it by how much their hairlines receded. So you're in an interview, <laughs> yeah. and the guy interviewing just gets out a ruler. He says, "I just need to look at something real quick." So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you you walk in there with a Norwood Zero. They're like, "Oh, we got a fresh one, boys. This one's got a lot of miles on the clock. <laughs> so, he, he's got well, a lot of miles to clock in." Yeah. So I heard. The further back your hairline is, the less likely you are to become a, a broker on Wall Street. So mm. get your um, you know, if if you are an aspiring broker. Get yourself a hair transplant if if your hairline isn't ideal. You know, Um, if you have a receding hairline, I think that is a little acceptable. The one that I have a problem with is the the monk thing, where it's it's literally just a hole on your head where your hair should be. (laughs) That is so just let it go, man. Everything else, you could be tasteful about a receding hairline. You know, get that Jason Statham stuff going. Yeah, some people look go with it. I'd look go with anything, so I don't care. I think I think. Now, if you're an old Asian man, you got a bit of a fucked up back and you got a walking stick, embrace, by all means, go for the monk thing. You, f- you look fucking sick. And if anything, I think people are more likely to buy stocks from you. <laughs> Dude, if, if, like, if, if, like, if like some monk pitched me something, like I don't care if a monk fucking walked into a fucking dragon's den and was like, hello, dragons, I'd like to pitch to you my company in exchange for a hundred th- for a hundred thousand pounds or in exchange for 20 percent of my company. It's called uh, Chainlink. That's it. My money's on the table. He's got it. (laughs) Well, monks and any type of Eastern, I guess, uh, monastic practice is pathetic, honestly. And so are Shaolin monks that practice that whatever their stupid karate is. Those people get the shit beaten out of them when they fight anyone else that has a practical fighting style. So they're not smart. They don't have insightful philosophy. They've never won real wars or battles, and their fighting style is stupid. They have like a, a you, knife on a string. Did you hear about this fucking... Uh, you about this Chinese, samurai. This yeah, Chinese um, MMA fighter who goes around just BTFOing the fucking Chinese monks that practice Kung Fu. Like, he'll challenge them to, like, a fucking MMA match, and he'll just, like, punch them, and they'll just get knocked out in, like, five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
See, they deserve it. And I saw an article recently that it was found out half of them were just on opium the entire time <laughs> or so, some sort of uh, depressive uh, illicit substance. So they're not even practicing their their art of being at peace and tranquility without the assistance of drugs. So they're just total posers like most Eastern philosophies are. I feel like uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I've been really. reading um, I've been reading <laughs> yeah. Tao, Tao Te Ching recently. It's good stuff. Yeah, I see a lot of people on Discord pretending that they've read that. Are you on that list now, too? It's an extraordinary... I, I have. I own it on paperback, unlike some people. Mm. Um, it's extraordinarily... Sh- it's extraordinarily short. You could probably read the entire thing in, like, an hour or two. Mm, okay. Well, it's an hour, yeah. and no one has no excuse to not read it. And then LARP is a <laughs> yeah. Chinese nationalist, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's Chinese a lot of... Uh, yeah. yeah, There's a lot... that You need a paywall to unlock what's behind that <laughs> joke, so that's okay. <laughs> oh, no, believe me, the, 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 there's no point in getting into that kind of lore, is there? Maybe no, one day there'll no. be a documentary. Yeah, there should be. There should be. Um, so I don't know. Just kind of throwing this out there. I saw Knives Out two last weekend, and uh, it was passable. Uh-huh. It was passable. So, I, what's it about? It's like a who done it yeah. kind of Rand Johnson sub subversion flick. It's like Clue. So I don't know if anyone here saw the first one, but I guess Adam's not here. So there's really nothing I can do about it, right? Who's Adam? Oh wow. Okay. That's what we're doing. That's what <laughs> <Okay>. we're doing. <laughs> um, well, in other news, it is uh, as of this recording, it is the twelfth of the wait. Yeah, the twelfth of wait. No, the second of the twelfth. No, the it's the it's, second it's December, of December. Uh, December which means second. It's officially it's officially twelve more days until Avatar two, and you guys. Oh will my kneel. god! You will um, kneel I, to I, the I new was king think, of the cinema. <laughs> I was thinking about Christmas, so I could play this. Christmas. Have you been a good boy? I know you have. <laughs> Come on. Santa's got a surprise for you. No, all right, all right. Uh, uh, all right. I, I already know it's coming. I already know it's coming. <laughs> I I recognize that sequence of uh, sounds anywhere. But, so. Excuse me? I'm about, to blow. I'm about to know what's coming. <laughs> Where do you know this from? <laughs> from being friends with you, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, you do see. You do yeah, see. Man, are you guys... Do not, do not ever give Ari your phone number because he will just you know, spam you speaking with unlimited of, uh... amounts of gay sex memes. Yeah. Excuse seriously. me? You're t- no, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what the fuck is this gaslighting, dude? To- you were the one today. you just fucking calling me around. To- okay. We were, we, me, me, me and Tyson and like uh, another one of my friends, we were just like chilling on a call and we were talking about um, uh, like privacy just across the internet and like doxing and like how... how how paranoid should one be about doxing? Blah, 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 all of that stuff. Tyson, in the middle of this, he just randomly fucking like calls me on my phone, despite us being on a call already. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I couldn't. I was on my phone, and he does that. So like, it, like my entire screen just like says Tyson is calling. Right? <laughs> and then, and then, and then get this. He texts me. He says a uh, he says an inappropriate word, and then he takes a very high resolution, very detailed picture of his crusty, dry. Uh, mutated feet, um, <laughs> and then and then as Why we're you talking, don't like that? <laughs> as we're talking about um, opsec and uh, um, uh, you, you know privacy and stuff, he sends me a photograph of his entire passport, with every okay. number visible. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. What'd you do with that information? Put it in the thumbnail for this I episode. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm going to do. And the thing is with this is like not because he texted me. This is permanently like Tyson can't delete this. This is permanently on my phone. You know what? I like if what Tyson's elaborate. doing. Yep. Tyson did a show of force by saying, I know where you live and you're my friend. Here's where I live. And that's how yeah. that's how a relationship should be made online. I, I, so. I agree. I agree with that. But it, 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 I found it rather strange that he did this. Just how it's my way of saying we're, we're now official. So, yeah. Well, I, I saw that foot picture and it was revolting. It looked like a, okay, a stuffed mannequin. Enough. It's not so. that fucking bad. Yeah, okay. I, I, like, I want to add. Yeah. The foot picture and the passport photo came in at the same time. No, together. no. <laughs> what it, that's what you have to do <laughs> in an airport. You show your passport and then you put your feet on the counter and they. They look at it. They investigate it. So I'll, I'll have you guys know. For the past two weeks, I've been moisturizing my feet. 
so they look significantly better. Yeah, not that from was what I can o- tell. That was an old picture of my feet. That was like from. Why a month do you ago. have old pictures of your crusty feet? <laughs> are you like ta- are you taking progress pictures or something? Yes, yes, I am. I want to see how much better they look once they're moisturized. Gonna be, are you, you like you moisturizing? See how- <laughs> He's moisturizing his feet to Ziz music. That reminds <laughs> me when I was walking around one time and these three kids. I was wearing flip flops, and these three kids started making fun of me. They were like, "Ha, huh, your feet are blue. You're like, they're like, your feet are purple. They're choking in those flip flops." So I guess they were trying to call me fat. But then I said, I, "I will say it was a moment of quick wit." I was just like, "Why are you looking at my feet?" And then he just went, "Ah, fuck you!" And then ran off with his friend. So I was like, "All right, you know, I think I BTFO." I think yeah. I came out on the top end of that engagement, but here I am still talking is, about it. So. They're running away like. <laughs> got them got them running away like <laughs> so, oh, so i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna spin i'm gonna spin the tyson wheel because i've actually seen a few things in here that uh that i may take a liking to so i'll start you off tyson um uh-huh. the, you have wait, one what? thing you wanted to talk <laughs> and i'll end you too um <laughs> <laughs> 24 bro. hours remaining <laughs> yeah, bro. No. Dawn of the first day Dawn of the first day <laughs> Tyson's feet <laughs> The first day <laughs> um, Countdown to a final moisturization <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly um, I got you There's a subject here called Future verticality that you wanted to talk about, Tyson. So Ooh, yeah. why don't you run me through this? And I, I want you to resist not talking about giant trees in the past. So Tyson, you go ahead. This is something else. I was so I was researching. I was researching a lot of things called metamaterials, which are like um, these new materials that are consisted of like really crazy, like new techniques of construction, like carbon nanotubes and all that shit. And apparently, if they can get this to large-scale production, we might see buildings with enough tensile strength at their core to support 10,000 stories in the future. And can I, I just want to say, I love the concept of verticality so much, and it mm-hmm. fucking pains me to, to, like, walk around the city, and, like, the fucking the tallest building is, like, 20 fucking stories. It's so annoying. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when I when I was a kid, I always had this this vision of the future where cities were were like up in the clouds. Where uncle and... didn't molest you. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Yeah, Tyson, you 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 you've just made me realize something. Uh-huh. That is what's missing about cities like New York. Imagine if like the buildings were just like vertically connected. Like there was like a bridge at like, uh, yeah, there was like a bridge at altitude between buildings yeah. and if you could like navigate a building while ele- like navigating between buildings while elevated across these bridges like Futurama if they, if they did that that would honestly be like the earth version of Coruscant from Star Wars you know how Coruscant <laughs> is like the, like different layers and shit imagine if mm-hmm. like buildings were 10,000 stories tall and like every thousand stories there was like a like an essentially a street from like from like roads and, and buildings but up in the air how fucking sick would that be I mean, I think it would be absolutely incredible, and I think from an anthropological standpoint, people underrate it. There is a, again, I don't know why I'm conservative, because I hate them. I don't even think I am conservative, (laughs) but you see some cultural tendencies to, to be towards buy a land, get tons of land, live far away from your neighbors. But then at the same time, they yearn from some for some sort of community populism as well, where they all band together and they're able to, I don't know, defend their traditions from the oncoming city mobs that somehow move way through their land eventually. What if you were to take all living spaces, condense them into a giant 10,000 story skyscraper, you know what's left after all of that? Tons and tons and tons of land freed mm. up for any. You can still you can have a, you can have an entire state of land if you condensed all of it to a city. And you know what else you'll get out of that city? A giant community of interconnected people 
who all will can walk to each other's buildings, walk to each other's communities. <clears throat> they can communicate with each other a lot closer. They can be closer to each other. And it, it is environmentally efficient to have these smaller things. But instead, people just want to sit back and go, oh, I will not eat the bugs. Oh, I will not. As if that entire <laughs> thing so, didn't come from somewhere. Yeah, it's all that pod boy shit. I'm so sick of that fucking so, so, shit. So, so, so tired. Oh, here's a, here's a logical you... extension of, of your idea. If, okay. if they want to do the fucking, like, uh, oh, I want to live with people that think like me, the, the populism in-group meme, you yeah. guys can do this, can have your own, like, conservative 10,000-story buildings, and then the liberals can live in the liberal 10,000-story building. And can, <laughs> yeah, it's just And then you can so, launch a nuke I, at I, each I, other. <laughs> are you guys familiar with the line? It yes, is a the Saudi Arabia constr- building, isn't it? Yes, a project under construction there. It is... Oh, in lo- Dubai? So quote. Yeah, no, Saudi Arabia. Uh, whatever. The shit. line... <laughs> The line is a smart, <laughs> linear city under construction in Saudi Arabia in Naom, Tabuk province, which is designed which is designed to have no cars, streets, or carbon emissions. The 170 kilometer long city is a part of Saudi Vision 2030. Okay, yeah. So basically, it's like a massive, massive fucking line that goes through the deserts, connects to the seaboard. Um, 170 kilometers long. That's like. I think it's something like, and there's like two layers of them, so it's like the equivalent of four thousand World Trade Centers connected, just like one long uh-huh. line of them. And um, yeah, no cars, so like transport is going to be like, I think like trains either side you can get to good. Like anywhere That's the way it should be. They're the most really efficient cool. form of travel available. That they're, yeah, they're better than cars. A hundred percent self-sustaining, zero percent carbon emissions, mm-hmm. um, and it's well, it's obviously going to be a utopia for the rich. So. I guess by extension of that, and this is kind of fucked up to say, like, by extension of that, I guess it's probably going to be quite safe. Um, it's it's an interesting yeah. project, and looking at the uh, some of the concept images, um, it's it's very. It's yeah, personally, I don't think it'll now. ever come into existence because if I'm, you look at the projected yeah. cost for it, it's like three trillion or like four trillion. Yeah, or something they probably like that. have that in the bank. Dude, you know how much oil money they have? Like, but they're gonna blow wraps. that all on one building, like really? I'm about to blow. <laughs> um, I'm about to blow it on one building. This, this, would be, this is like, <laughs> it would be like, I don't know. I feel like it would do well. I, feel, I Dude, genuinely do. I genuinely. They've do. proposed so many stupid projects in that region over the years that haven't happened. This is the city of the future. This is this. <laughs> this is that. actually <laughs> started. They've actually like just... Niam is one. All they do is slay the Aboriginal population and get slave labor, and then they don't build it. It's if you're gonna kill the Aboriginals, at least build the cool city. So yeah. where are we at here? You Ooh, know, actually, now we that you, now, we now killed that... all the Indians and built a sick country. So we showed you how it was done. So <laughs> <laughs> Tom, dude, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Now, now we're on the, okay. Now that we're on the topic, so recently I have been getting into the works of uh, Graham Hancock, uh, "Fingerprints of the Gods," "Magicians of oh, the Gods." Oh, wait, something. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to go into this too much, but um, I think, I think everyone owes it to themselves to learn about what could be the true ancient history of humanity, um, the Great Flood, uh, 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 and um, the lies archaeologists tend to, to what well, okay so what i discovered was that archae- archaeologists suffer from the same issues that modern day scientists do <gasps> what i <laughs> discovered <laughs> what you discovered okay. I, 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 no no Go no ahead. i just disco- what is no, your no, phd no. in you fucking loser yeah. Go ahead. It's just i and, and graham hancock just the two the <laughs> dynamic duo <laughs> no. i discovered his works and i learned mm. of this okay <laughs> Stop! Stop projecting your own fucking gay things onto me. <laughs> oh, it's coming from you. That's real like, rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his mind just like yeah. one sort of insults just reverts back to gay stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, what a surprise! <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go on. Sho- yeah, keep shoving your mouth with cock, you fucking loser. I know. Sorry. <laughs> like, these, I hear. I hear these, you chewing. Chewing these on these chips are good. Balls. Yeah, yeah. Gargling I'm your boys' on balls. Cock and cock and molly. Huh? <laughs> Chomping on chips in the Phantom. <laughs> that's that's one way to say it I right, do you have something to finish up about this ancient apocalypse netflix thing because i have another point to make about cities that pisses me off you just go for it man i give up okay. this. <laughs> so my big issue is that conservatives have an obsession with reacting to culture they live downstream from culture and i know to me i 
Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't, I'm gonna let yeah. that pass by. Yeah. And I've I've said this. Get fucked. <laughs> there we go. So I've said this many times. Conservatives say the cities are done. I'm gonna move out in this. I'm gonna move out into the country. I'm gonna move out into the suburbs. They think more like me. Then they complain that culture doesn't conform to the way that they want. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Could that be because you gave up the cultural and economic hubs? where all of these ideas are exchanged and move out to the that country to do nothing. If you stayed in the city and fought for the city, I'm, I'm not going to say with your ideas, <laughs> lay, lay marketplace of ideas. No, I just mean <laughs> if you if you kept the city culturally relevant with your ideals instead of sprinting away to, to live in some fucking Ohio suburb and then brag about it. And I, I don't I don't know what to tell you. You're a victim of culture going forwards. You're not creating it. You're not at the hubs that are creating it. So when you talk about these giant vertical cities people need to look at them a lot differently as an opportunity to expand more land and condense community and you know let different ideas flourish in city areas instead of just saying like ah they're just they're just limp tarred hell holes that live in these cities you can change that and in turn change culture but they never will because they're too stupid because they're culturally inept and only think financially that's interesting so. it's like if your entire culture is built on going where people aren't instead of going where people are like, no wonder your culture is, like, fucking dying out, you know? Exactly, but the thing that bothers mm. me the most is when, when people were first immigrating or when these cities were first made, New York City, you know, wherever, these were amazing hubs with varying ideas, mostly to the right, really, and then that was later sacrifice. So why can't you go back to these cities being these amazing cultural hubs of in innovation and the same anymore? I mean, I don't know about New York. But yeah, we can make them America. the same anymore. We can make you, them the same. Yeah, seen, like you know what? anything about New York? Drunk off your ass the whole time you're uh, in New York. Oh uh, yeah, okay, yeah. You see, and I was just going to talk about America in general. You seen the before and after photos of like like um, like this? It would be like some place in like fucking Detroit. I don't know, hundred years ago, fucking sick architecture inspired by ancient European stuff. And, uh, you know, you fast forward 100 years, and now it's just a car park and a Walmart. Um, I love car parks, and I love Walmart, so I don't know what you want to say about and that. And I hate you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love plazas. I love me a good plaza, so. I bet but, you do, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. If anyone has any other commentary on that, I could keep going with it, but that's uh, the way I feel. I think... Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go into that part of politics but you oh know, i have... see what you're saying there are demographic changes that cities have undergone over time yes but not, that's because we've conceded them not but... quite that's not quite i, well, I had oh <laughs> i just exposed myself <laughs> <Peace>. I, I, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say uh I was, I was do you have a dog bills. whistle sound effect <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> go ahead i sorry <laughs> those, yeah uh those that are uh pulling the strings they don't really have the uh uh, the honorable intentions of making a city better for the people in mind it's just it's more so to make it and of just america as a whole to turn it into an autonomous nation of of slave labor um mm -hmm. and the slaves are just that's right <laughs> the old debt like, slavery yep yep yeah i mean it, we're, i mean they're already there dude i mean like this, uh, what's like the average how, do you how, know how many households have over a thousand dollars in their bank or something like okay something. Well, so less than 50 percent of the western population have less than 500 bucks in their account really really bearish you <laughs> mean the... less than half have more than or i guess less it's than, the same thing either less way than half have less thing. than 500 bucks yeah okay paycheck to paycheck actually fucked and i i don't i know see this is a difficult discussion to have because some people just immediately argue like talk yeah speak in bad faith and like just dismiss you off off the bat but um i think it i mean it's we're getting there to like kind of bordering on slavery and that like slaves do get a standard of living by default oh, no um, okay <laughs> i'm not encouraging i'm not encouraging slavery <laughs> at all i just want to make that clear but i mean we're just going to talk just gonna go off the dictionary all right they have a standard of living right let's let's look at the middle east for example and the slaves over there slavery still exists over there um they have a standard of living they don't have much in savings um and i think the average american person is kind of 
I mean, think about it, right? Okay, so you're a kid. You you go to high school. You get out. You go to college. You're in debt. So now you're permanently in debt, essentially for the rest of your life. So you can't ever properly save, unless you're smart. Well, unless you're really smart or lucky or coddled. Or your or... parents instill it to you endlessly. Like yeah. They hammer. It Actually, in your yeah. Brain. I just realized that if you come out of college with like 200k in student loan debt. How the fuck are you supposed to save up for a house? It's like nearly you can't, impossible. You're that's it. That's that's the meme that's right there. That's a... No, no, no. I will not let you get away with that on my right. fucking cockpit. I will not. What they do is they significantly devalue <laughs> this currency to okay, a ridiculous yeah. amount where by the time you get out of college, you are hampered with college debt. Then every fucking dumb boomer in your life on the left or right says, now you need to get a house. Guess what? You're in 20 years of college debt, leapfrogging into a 30-year mortgage where you are also in debt as well. And think- with your car. I understand that you can use... Car, uh, houses as an investment vehicle to, to get ahead. I understand that. But most people are just saving up to get in one and live in one without understanding that they're re-enveloping in themselves into debt that they had just gotten out of from college. But they want to keep – they push the houses. They push the college. They push everything with an increasingly devalued debt. The, the lengths people have to – the normal average person has to go in now, especially as of this second, to get a house is – astronomical in this country it's it's untenable if you want to live in anywhere that has a a human within a mile but go ahead do do you think things would be better um for the end you i was about to say end user um (laughs) for the uh, the american you pretending you're a coder i get it keep going oh yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) crypto brained (laughs) um if if say college okay let's say let's say the college is owned by the state right um, and the college loan itself was um, tied or pegged to government bonds, and and by extension of that, it would actually adjust for inflation. Do you think that would make things easier? Um, I don't know what you're saying, Tyson. Do you know what he's saying? Because I'm too dumb. So you're talking about how you know? Uh, oh, you think the price right of now? college I mean, should be how scaled, not- honestly? Yes, how is honestly, it not yeah. already just for inflation? If your college debt is like ten thousand dollars, and then what as what the what currency inflates and ten thousand dollars is worth less, it should be easier for you to earn that ten thousand to pay it back. I'm but not then saying you've got interest as well. So I oh, didn't okay. mean to say that you know as interest rates go up or as inflation goes up, then this happens to student loans. I wasn't trying to draw a uh, parallel or a comparison between the two. I'm just saying. On top of having massive student loans and trying to save up in houses to put yourself in debt, we already have an incredibly weak dollar as Dude, well. Can I just say that how is- incredibly fucked up it is that you guys have to pay interest on a fucking student loan? Like, what the mm-hmm. fuck is that? Like, in New Zealand, mm-hmm. there's like 0% interest forever on all student loans. Yeah, but you guys, no one cares about you guys, so go fuck yourself. Yeah, that is true. I. Right, what about in uh, where <laughs> okay. you are? Uh, so as I understand, uh, you start paying once you cross a certain threshold, in, like after you leave college, a certain threshold in your pay. Yeah, um, what about if you finish it, though? I guess I'll ask someone else. <laughs> and if you don't pay, like, I think like after 30 years, it just gets wiped down. You don't need to do it. <laughs> okay. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> You should, I, listen, listen. You know how you guys, you boomers, <laughs> you boomers have no idea how fucking uh, bad COVID fucked up things. It doesn't help that I was anyway. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Real mm-hmm. quick. Yep. I don't think I would have been able. I paid off my student loans way ahead of time because I got lucky in crypto. Well, not lucky. I was just an investment genius. But most people are still just <laughs> sitting there, just. Chipping away, paying their interest, paying their interest and doing whatever. I, that could have been me if I didn't, you know, do extreme analysis and superior <laughs> extreme homework. <laughs> yeah, on this incredible token called Chainly. Okay, I can't even finish the sentence. <laughs> AKA shit posting in Discord for three hours a day. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, I mean, what can I say? Well, I did that and it landed me somewhere I never saw myself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Let's never show them the man behind the curtain. Just never yeah, show them the man behind the curtain. That. Never, never. So, all right. Do you guys have anything else? Because I'm about to reach do, back in. A, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to reach back you. in your fucking big fat bowl of guacamole and shove your face in. You... I'm done with the guac. I'm uh, onto the taco. So. On onto the cock. Okay. Remember the guac memes with Jeb Bush? <laughs> that yeah. was funny. Yeah. That was funny. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I ha- Okay. So 
Uh, this is something completely different. I found it interesting and I wanted to read it to you guys. I'm not going to read the entire article, but I'll read a short excerpt at least uh, up until... Let's see. Was it written by your friend Terry, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. No. Did you receive no, a cell no. phone in, in exchange for it? <laughs> no. Are you are you guys familiar with organoids? <laughs> no, I like the sound yeah, of it though. I want to talk yeah. about this. So this is an article from Mind Matters, and it's uh maybe I'll link the uh, the research paper on. Oh, this is fun. You're gonna do that whole thing where you find uh, thirty seconds to find the article, and then no, I've got to... it. I've, I've okay. got it already. Okay. Oh, and now you're just gonna read it word for word. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yes, and I want <laughs> I, I want you guys to hear it all properly from. Yeah, we from like when one. you do that for five mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so you couldn't interpret it yourself and repeat it to us? You have to read the article. Okay, go ahead. I've read the entire thing. I wanted to discuss it afterwards. So okay, then summarize it so you can do it shorter. I really want to shoot you two in the face. <laughs> <laughs> He's you like know, searching I, for something on the soundboard right now. I <laughs> wake, I wake which, up which angry. Which wacky sound can that, I play to cope? <laughs> I wake up angry knowing that I can't put my hands on you. <laughs> 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 All right. Go ahead. So the article is called "Are the brain cells in a dish that learned Pong conscious?" That oh god, that's terrifying. That's terrifying. Go okay, ahead. so here we go. Human-derived organoids learned faster than AI and outperform mouse-derived organoids in terms of volley length, raising troubling questions. So here we go. Um, scientists have successfully taught a collection of human brain cells in a Petri dish how to play the video game Pong, kind of. Researchers at the biotechnology startup Cortica Labs have created mini brains Consist of a, consisting of 800,000 to 1 million living human brain cells in a Petri dish. The cells are placed on top of a microelectrode array that analyzes the neural activity. We think it's fair to call them cyborg brains, says some incel. Um, <laughs> what's happening here? Okay, so here's the basic idea. What if instead of building artificial intelligence with computer chips, we used human brains? That's the inspiration behind all of this. It uses miniature brains called organoids, which are cells grown from a human-induced uh, plurip- pluripotent, 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 pluripotent penis mm-hmm. stem cells. Um, these brains are then oh. plugged into computer chips. The company's first proof of concept. Blah, blah, blah. So the video of them playing pong. Blah blah blah. So how does this happen? Blah 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 blah. The details of a blah 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 blah. blah. Let's see. Let's skip oh. forward. Opa epic <laughs> style. Yep. <laughs> Very good, Tyson. Um, <laughs> You're, I'm so proud of the both of you. Uh, the theory going. states that the brain always seeks to minimize the error between its predictions and obs- observations, either by changing its predictions or changing its observations, by changing acting on its environment. Okay. Um, there was a statistic in here that blew my fucking mind. Um, okay. It was in the research paper. I read it. Yes, I actually did. Fuck you. Um, mm-hmm. They always... Uh, you know what? Okay. I'll give you 20 seconds to find the statistic. I ain't got nothing better to do. Okay. Are you enjoying a taco, by the way? Yeah, it's great. I got a fried fish taco and a shrimp one as well. So very nice, um, very nice. About I to had, finish it up. Speaking of tacos, I had Taco Bell in New Zealand uh, yesterday, and it was dog shit. So <laughs> uh, I love fast food, but I hate Taco Bell, so I can't help mm-hmm. you out. Okay, so so okay, so I I can't find the statistics. If I recall, it was something like it was between ten mm. to like a hundred times more effective than. For one, uh, just a neural network, yeah, just a neural network AI, AI and um, and mice, mouse derived organoids. So here, here's the most interesting part. Um, long story short, these um, these organoids, human human derived organoids, may actually be conscious, and in in the sense that as they're playing pong, as they're playing pong, they're, they're receiving the same kind of um, signals that you and I are receiving in our brain as we discuss um, gay remixes of of rap and hip-hop mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Moya eating fish. Um, the, these brain cells may actually believe that they are the little the little thing. In, you know what they call it? That thing in Pong? The, the thing that it bounces off of. Paddle. The paddle, that's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. These brain cells may actually believe that they are the paddle and they're consciously moving around with survival instinct. Just think about so- that for a second. 
I have a few things. So uh, just imagine a bunch of organoids who can think but cannot scream of their infinite pain that they feel mm. all interconnected by the blockchain. <laughs> Sounds incredible. So, yes, there's that. <laughs> and then then, then um, there's the idea of the Matrix. Yes, we're going there. This is essentially like... It is like the Matrix. This is about as immersive as virtual reality could physically get this is on a <clears throat> biochemical scale this is this is a simulation the, these this is actual biochemistry being convinced of something that doesn't exist and acting upon it as if its life depends on it bearing in mind these are brain cells just sitting in a petri dish and these things think they, they are a paddle in a video game and they are screaming for their lives and they are they're playing this game as if as if their life depends on it. Just think about it. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's actually that's pretty incredible. Their whole existence is the pong field and surviving the ball, not getting by them. That, and the fact that this is one petri dish, and it's like a fuck ton more efficient and more effective than using like bi like a billion dollars worth of but like you're, you're creating equipment. sentient life to do it. That's what's horrifying. That's what's so. horrifying. Yeah, but is it sentient? Because these are this is as symbiotic as like machine and man can be well to be fair i mean i question whether the two of you are sentient from the things that come out of your mouth so yeah i do very i do good, think there's a good. lot of room to discuss this um Epic. i will i will reveal a massive power level right now and it may be what some would say soy uh oh. when mm. the original star wars trilogy concluded <laughs> There were books written by, uh, it actually was written by R.A. The first one was written by R.A. Salvatore, and it's called, oh gosh, it's called the Yu the series is called the Yuzang Vong Wars or something like that. But basically, the whole time the Emperor was doing what he was doing so he could protect the galaxy from a threat that came from beyond the galaxy, and that was the Yuzang Vong. And the Yuzang Vong were immune to the Force, and their weapons were, wait for it, organisms that had sentient thoughts so they would ride in on on like some platform that had a little eye on it and had sentient thought they would their guns were organisms their their spy technology were just organisms that would slither around so they basically mutated and created these organisms that were in constant pain to serve them in war so that's that's kind of what you reminded me of when you said organoids so yeah and they're mm. horrifically evil they're horrifically evil uh, antagonists in the series. Would they, would, so. but, I mean, think about it. Wouldn't you, but they killed Chewie. Fuck Chewie. He's a fucking imagine, loser. Imagine but. being born into immortality, unable to scream and express your pain. It's like you are tr you've truly been forsaken by God at that point. You are at, <laughs> mer you are at the mercy of man himself. Mm. And it's crazy, right? And hey, this is what I found really interesting is that traditionally with uh, yeah with traditional forms of like artificial intelligence research it, it it usually tends to be the emulation of um neurology and psychology but um on, on metal and like in, in on a machine but in this case you're essentially running a machine on a human yeah yeah and that's you that's are, terrifying instead of i don't really find of, that find that like that surprising that in, instead AI, of building instead you know, of building a machine like, following Moore's law and the knowledge of man itself you are using the the pre-existing perfection of nature and god's creation as a means to um apply your ideas if that makes sense yeah what do, what do you think about that tyson i think it's pretty interesting rather than bending your ideas like, to work like, around god's creation yeah are you really surprised that Organoid, organoids or organisms perform that much better than AI when when they're so much more fluid than whatever a fucking uh, circuitry is in, the, in a well, yeah, transistor. Yeah. Like that's nature's perfection, right there. Like the brain it's, cell, it's, it's, it's so it much more. It's so much more fucking adept at like um, performing its function than a transistor. That I don't see why we haven't made biomechanical computers at this point, or why we haven't like pursued it as much as we have with uh, silicon. Because there are ethical ramifications behind it, so I don't know if we can attribute sentience to that yet. Uh, yeah, like... but this is actual human life involved because these these are living organisms, human organisms at that. 
I mean, here's the thing, right? And I don't want to get in too much into the whole like pro-life, pro-choice kind of thing. But you know how like people talk about like, uh, so if you're pro-life, you'd be like, life begins at inception, right? So, and and, and the, the the paper actually specifically mentions they don't actually use embryonic stem cells. So this actually does bypass all of that kind of the ethics come in in terms of like the psychology and consciousness itself but like still this is a human mind essentially mm. at play here How so like when you're talking you just said it's like 200 million brain cells if it is sentient you could argue that it could be i it's, mean it's it's the human mind that's what it is i, I mean believe... when you're talking about pro choice pro life you're talking about like the, at that point objectively the human mind isn't i mean maybe you could ask you, you could argue about consciousness and spirituality or whatever if i crack open your head brain. and i slice off like a shave your brain and which contains like 200 million brain cells is that going to be another sentient That's, being yes uh, it probably would no tyson uh, it probably would be i would argue okay. it would be but it was real point. in my mind <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's basically what we're trying to say right now it's um you know i i'll give you a freebie because because you're doing a great job and you're a good kid but if you want me to really cram the good stuff down your throat to Do keep it. with this episode's theme, go to Builder Rejected on YouTube. It's this outrageously schizophrenic guy with an incredible voice. I'm not telling you to do it now, but he's Too really – it, it. this channel has it hits the perfect peak of just extreme con- conspiracy dementia, I guess religious dementia, dementia. that I, I love it. And Was this it guy – it's just called Builder Rejected, at Be okay. Rejected on YouTube. And he just, he did a final video and said, I'm done doing YouTube. I've said all I needed to say. And then just left. But like, here's, he, he talks he talks about transhumanism a lot and stuff like that. But one of his videos was, Demonata, Possess Dolls to AI Androids, Deus Ex Machina, Part 1. So there's I'm, a Part 2. I'm looking and at he, his channel artwork right now. <laughs> His channel artwork will do it, and also the like, Church of AI, Godmother Superior Sophia. He also has one where a guy, he lets a guy give a two-hour interview on how he was gang stalked and how the New World Order. Just completely giving a platform to this obviously unwell man. But I got hidden gang, I, this, I found the video: gang stalking and V two K testimony by private security whistleblower. The thumbnail <laughs> says "Silent Holocaust." <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget, there's a silent call holocaust too. Death by 5G smart cities, parentheses, cattle to the slaughter. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this guy stopped making videos. I think he was fucking killed. I, honestly, I, I love this guy, and I love the way that he presents his ideas. He made me think about things a lot differently on a conspiracy level. It's like the next level. So people are sitting around saying, oh, Balenciaga has this. Like, like, fuck off with all, this is like this is the real stuff. This is way up there. So I, what I, I think everyone should go look at this channel if you're if you're a true aficionado of just this is the most penis. whacked out conspiracy stuff. So no, I like um, this. I like this. I will definitely, and they're long as well. So this is this is peak listen to before going to sleep material. Yeah, that'll give you some interesting dreams. He's got an incredible voice too, so I can't say enough nice things about this guy's channel. But yeah, he is probably dead. Probably, <laughs> he probably. This, um, yeah, <laughs> there was this other YouTube. Ch- so yeah, YouTube has these strange corners of like memory hold content that, in order to find, you don't, you can't actually find it through the search bar. You tend to find them on some obscure forum, and then you're directed to this, and then it, it's just it's one of those places. It's like falling into a, a back room of the internet. Hey. Um, Go ahead. Anyways, so it was this uh, channel about a young man who was exploring the idea of quantum immortality. Long oh story God. short, he made a Dropped. string of longs and longs, yep. lots and lots of videos. Do you know how it ended? The kid shot himself to test okay. the theory. <laughs> okay. That was all because yep. he saw that stupid picture of, what's the guy, John McAfee, who yep. is definitely dead and definitely killed himself. He's a fucking idiot. Uh, that where <sighs> There was a picture going around where he had a gun to his head and said, when John McAfee pulls the trigger, he has quantum immortality and the gun shoots in another dimension. So he took it yeah, literally, well, I I'm, guess. I'm going I'm to respectfully how, how disagree. Was, how was suicide not the end result of every experimentation with quantum immortality? You know? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I don't so, know. okay, okay. Allow me to explain. I, I am inclined to believe that John McAfee was telling the truth. And hear me out. I think it's very consistent with oh ancient God knowledge, in theology. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, hear me out. My okay. proposition for reality. <laughs> Okay. Well, give, give Ari the floor for five seconds. This is what he does. <laughs> like oh. determinism and free will 
coexist happily. God gives you free will and he also is aware of your entire life at the same time. How? Basically, you live in a linear timeline parallel to an infinite number of other timelines in which other possibilities take place. And it is by virtue of your decisions that you switch between these timelines actively. This is how God in said timelines is aware of exactly what's going to happen in this timeline and how you also have free will. You switch between these timelines. Quantum immortality would dictate that when you shoot yourself, by virtue of survival of your spiritual self, you would switch to the timeline in which, by some <laughs> miraculous degree, you survive and and you live on so if i was to shoot myself right now i may die to you guys but in my timeline my gun cocks up it doesn't work and i don't die okay uh, just let me let me stop and right there and that. anyone guys live on through that call him or try no. to tell the new Ahmed, why don't you bring it to my house yeah let me just do a huge serious disclaimer please no one try this please call the hotline oh, yeah. do whatever the please don't, don't i's do just talking don't out of his that. ass don't do that um, don't do that yeah. But uh, all right, let's let's push all that to the side. We've we've had your good conspiracy corner, quantum immortality, builder rejected. Uh, I, I'm not sure how we got on the organ organites thing, but we're organoids. we're good to go there. Organoids thing. So I I want to thank you for that. We'll just get onto a quick palate cleanser here because I've been waiting to talk about this in the goodie bag. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I guess you want to talk about people who are screaming, but no one can hear them. And uh, he, at this point, is an organoid. You have a note, Tyson, called Will Smith Mental Devastation. <laughs> so, what is what is the meaning behind this note? So. It's exactly what it sounds like. So, there was some news that came out recently that... So, you, you guys remember how, like, Will Smith had a wife and his wife cheated on him with this, like, young rapper? Yeah, uh, his current wife or his he, ex-wife? He he he's been she, married to the same woman the whole time. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the entire, but does that ring that. a bell? Like uh, his wife Jada Pinkett cheated on Will with uh, with a rapper. Yeah, it was with it was with her son's friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, here's you're the right. Funny yep. thing. Here's a funny thing. So so recently, the rapper that his wife cheated on him with just came out as gay and revealed his new boyfriend at the fucking uh, <laughs> <laughs> some award show. <laughs> So He'd love the beginning no. of our episode. What, what was it? Sucking dick in a phantom yeah. or something? <laughs> so just the absolute fucking state of Will Smith at this point. Like, god damn. Someone pray for him, dude. Will Smith turns to a saddle. <laughs> she, she has something. She must have something on him at this point or... He just is a, oh, he's yeah. a uh, masochist. Yeah. He must, maybe he's just a masochist. Maybe he's nah, an emotional dude, masochist. Dude, he's got something bad being held to his head to not fucking drop this. The he's most, a good, it, he's a good guy, man. Have you seen that movie where he punched the alien in the face? I think he's an incredible actor, and I think he, deep down, is a good person, really. He's just deeply mm. confused about his relationship. I think he's one of the very few genuine guys in Hollywood, really. I I'd think say. he's being held hostage. Yeah, by by who handlers? This could some be would say <laughs> if he was gay the whole time himself. That way, he doesn't yeah. care if his if his wife was cheating because he's just getting a uh, phantom dick <laughs> on the side. <laughs> <laughs> an, an incubus, some would say. Okay, so I noticed the thing I always thought that was interesting about Will Smith and Jada Pinkett's relationship was that Jada Pinkett the the commonly held idea is that she will always be obsessed with Tupac. Her first love was and always will be Tupac. And Will Smith could never fill the hole that Tupac left when he died. Uh, so she will, she tells her own children and shows them the letters from Tupac and how much she loved him. Yep, so state. that kind of intersects with their relationship in an awful way. But he signed up for it. He signed up for it. But Tupac is... 20 times the thinker Will Smith will ever be. So, cuz <laughs> yeah, he's both, the best rapper of all time, so yeah. Both both Jada Pinkett and Kamala Harris big fans of Tupac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. That was a good old type. Of, but I the thing, the reason why I thought this subject was interesting cuz before we got on, I saw a picture of he has a new movie about being a slave and apparently it bombed and it's not much better than any B-roll movie. And I thought just seeing Will Smith's face portrayed as a slave, that would take me out of the movie immediately. Like, yeah. you, you, ain't, you ain't that kind so of dog, man. Come on. 
not, you, go on. Not, not typecast. I think it's just more, he's not meant to play the role of a slave. You got to give that to some up-and-coming like, like uh, African Smith black actor. No where one if, he's, if he's acting, I can't see the character he's portraying. I just see Will Smith, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's amazing because st people still like Leo, even though he hasn't done a good movie, and I don't, I can't even remember the last one. Never okay. happened, really. So Titanic. There you and go. That was the last good movie. Did all about how my life got turned upside down. Oh, dude. There you speaking go. of uh, of Kino talk, um, dude, oh, I watched. Um, he had to do it, didn't he? Yeah. He yeah, almost. Yeah. Wait, hold I on, watched... hold on. Uh... He just said that. Ah, oh, he. There was twenty seconds left in the hour, and Tyson said it. So he, we almost made it a full hour without him saying that. But go ahead, go ahead. Have to wait for that Kino for a long time. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kino in the bag. Sneezing the bag. <laughs> <Sneezing> the <brap. laughs> Stop. <laughs> Ain't nobody tell him. <laughs> so, so for the I'm uninformed, gonna... <laughs> just real no, quick, because no, go I gotta, go. I gotta point this out for a second. Uh, before we got on, we were chokingly singing a song and. The words were, it was to Old Town Road, but we replaced the words with just dumb internet words that Tyson says <laughs> all the time. So that was why they started breaking out and saying that. But go, go ahead, Tyson. Sorry, I just had to explain that. So I want to ask you guys, what is your opinion of the film The Shining? Have you guys seen it? Do you guys like it? Go ahead, I. I haven't seen it. Mm, I saw it and I like the... The only thing I do remember, and it's funny because I've seen the whole movie, but the only things I can think of are the momentary snips of – of uh, the, the momentary, I guess, glimpses or clips or images that they flash during it. Like the two kids standing in the hallway or the guy bent over. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. <laughs> I think that movie is more myth than cinema to me, which I think is interesting. And his name's escaping me at the moment, but he Jack has Nicholson. a way of... No, the, the guy who made it. Oh, uh, St Stanley Cooper. Yeah, he definitely has a way of elevating movies into a genre that... Not genre, but... Uh, I guess, t to a viewing capacity that isn't really around in other movies. He has a, he has his own sense. He, he elevates the genre, which it doesn't deserve to be because movies are just entertainment. They're not art to me. But mm. he tries his hardest to make them art, and he does a good job of, of doing that. So, I don't know. Why? What would well, you think of it? Well, I... I've seen The Shining before, but I've actually recently seen the sequel to The Shining, which actually came out recently. Do you guys what? realize it was a sequel? It's called Dr. Sleep. I didn't know that was about that. I thought that had to do with... Okay, interesting. The yeah, show? It's, it's literally... Uh, so, you know, uh, in The Shining, it's about the kid, Danny, when he's, like, a kid. He's, like, under 10 years old. Okay. Um, Dr. Sleep is when he's in his 40s, and, you know, he's he's traumatized from the event. He's a fuck, he's a fuck up his whole life. He's drunk and shit. He's trying to put his life back together, and he meets another girl with, like, magical sort of like uh powers like him and he's trying to save her from from these like evil guys and i actually really like the movie it's like a really good film good story the actors are good but one interesting Isn't ian note, mcgregor yeah ewan mcgregor okay and, nice but, yeah. but one interesting thing i i heard about the film that these two films the shining and the sequel is that the the shining so for for those of you who don't know, Stanley King, I mean, uh, fuck, Stephen. Well, King, Stephen King wrote the yeah, book. Stephen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen King actually fucking hates The Shining, and um, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of based actually. Uh, yeah, I'm it, fine with that. <laughs> yeah. So he hates it because um, he he says like there's no redemption uh, of any of the characters at the end. It's just a nihilistic uh, portrayal of 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 the story. Um, but Dr. Sleep actually takes that advice to heart and it does provide a redemption of sorts to really uh, Danny. Yeah. So it, it's sort of like what, what St uh, Stephen King envisioned for the shining in the first place by adding in that redemption part. That's interesting that Stephen King feels that way because I think Kubrick suffers from the same problem that Nolan does 
it's that they can't convey emotion and character well in their movies. They're incredible at setting up a screen, setting up a shot, and telling and playing it out coherently in in a digestible way. But I don't think I've ever looked back and felt the emotion that characters are supposed to feel in Nolan movies, in Kubrick movies. They're just really well done, quote unquote, piece of art movies. So I, it's interesting that Stephen King had that opinion. He didn't feel like characters had uh, had the best the best ending, uh, that or it wasn't portrayed in the way that he would have liked it to be. Yeah, so. I know exactly what you mean. Like I can see a, a Stanley Kubrick film, and I can admire it for its technical excellence and and its artistic vision but it doesn't feel like a real character to me you know yes yes i totally feel that way and uh, unfortunately to his credit stephen king does try and flesh out characters in his books the only stephen king book i've ever read is salem's lot and i loved it so I, i'll assume a lot of his other works are are great to that degree but that's that's one of his best ones uh mm. i is there something you want to share with the class <laughs> um I don't know what happens next, but I intuitively want to be a good person and live a good life. But my intuition tells me that roping is going to sabotage my transcendence. And it's quite literally instant gratification. And through pattern recognition, I can acknowledge that instant gratification has never led to anything objectively good or moral. God gave me morals and I do the math and I am aware that roping is bad. Even though I wish to end the pain and on the only way is roping, I must accept that I live through the difficulty and... The anxiety is part of the challenge, so I do it because I like it, and like muscle building, it's a form of building my spirit, and it is a dedication to God, and my soul ultimately seeks his validation and reward. Okay, well, that's some stupid trad Twitter bullshit that you just said. So, uh, no, I think I, we're about I, finished. I said all of that myself. Oh, okay, well, still in the same realm. But, uh, are we let's, finished uh, up here? Let's dip back into crypto for one last time. Um Okay. So I came across some really interesting shit recently um, about the crypto space. And I know that people will look at this FTX shit and think um, it's really, really fucking bad for the industry. And I actually thought that too, until I heard some talk between uh, TradFi people, people in the traditional uh, finance. So apparently they smell blood in the water and they're circling crypto uh tech uh right now because of this ftx debacle so ftx they owned a lot of technology they i think they had like ledger x or something and tradfi they're actually seeing this as an opportunity to scoop up these technologies on the cheap for the future i think uh, a couple of tradfi firms were, were trying to make a play for that ledger x technology and um i just want to say like do don't don't be too overly bearish because TradFi is currently bullish and they are scooping up some crypto tech uh, in the midst mm. of this FTX blood. So they're they're really going out when there's blood on the streets. Yeah, and I, and I want to I want to try and use like an analogy um, uh, for this whole situation. The way I see it, right, is you can think of this as a watershed moment for crypto. I see it like FTX has killed the Wild West of crypto. And now this is the transitionary stage into the sanitized stage of crypto with all the big firms and and all the institutions. I think... Really? You don't think it's yeah. the opposite? Interesting. I thought it was yeah. everyone's going to leave, so we're left with the Wild West again. <laughs> I thought that too, but apparently the tech is solid and TradFi firms are making a play for it. So if they want to sanitize crypto, this is how they would do it. Mm, well, it's certainly working. And people who have been begging for crypto to be legitimized, which, no, we do not want that. Uh, yeah. This is what you're going to get. So it, how about you sanitize shame. your feet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Tyson, I appreciate you sharing that. And I think we're ready to roll out because it's been more than an hour. So I, uh, I, I had fun. I hope everyone shut their brains off and just, you know, listen, listen to the siren of the, the pink boys cockpit kind of lull <laughs> them off to sleep. So and uh, I, as we, uh, as we pull up to the world trade center, we're about to 
reach our destination. Oh, yeah, you're talking from the cockpit. Very good, very good. <laughs> from the uh, phantom please cockpit. do not fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Where we're going, you won't need them. Yeah, maybe 9-11 was just a quantum immortality experience. So you it's know like, what? Well, that's actually, how, no, that's why they have all those shows where people go on flights and then they come back years later. Like, the, what that show, The Missing Whatever, where their their fl- their plane crashes and they come back for it. Maybe that's some weird, that something weird going on there. That's yeah, there, there's a few shows that's like that. That's actually a very, that's a, I like that, Moy. That's a really good mind, like a thought experiment for quantum immortality. What happens uh-huh. at that point? How do these? How does every single passenger in a timeline uh, survive? That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, R- really maybe, makes one think. No, no, people have yeah. quite profound experiences um, on on the verge of their death. Maybe, and I, I, I mean, it's not our question that that's where divine intervention takes place, right? That's not that's not that much of a stretch to say, right? No, it's not too much of a stretch to say, but we'll 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 leave people to think about that stretch over the course of the week because I need to uh I need to head out and throw my food away. So Can I uh, conclude I'm go- this episode? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll be great. So go you know what? I had a good time. I got nothing to say. Tyson, you got anything to say? Nope, I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, roll us out. Well, I forgot what I was going to say, so so on that bombshell, it's time to end. Good night.